Hi, uh, we're back at Out of Bounds, and I'm Faisal Kabaria, and with me now is uh, Yusra Askari on the phone, and she's a correspondent of NDTV. Hi, Yusra, how are you doing? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, tell us, uh, what do you consider, uh, what are your thoughts about this issue that's now crept up about the government inviting proposals for um, uh, banning millions of URLs in Pakistan? The Ministry of Information Technology's National ICT and R&D Fund's newspaper advert inviting proposals to set up the national URL filtering and blocking system is not only condemnable, but also a curb on the rights of Internet users across Pakistan. And this also contrary to the National ICT and R&D Fund's vision, which is to transform Pakistan's economy into a knowledge-based economy by promoting efficient, sustainable, and effective ICT initiatives. Okay, so... Um, uh you know, we all know that this is totally contrary to what the funds set up to do, but uh, how do you think this will impact us on an international level? I mean, this is just uh, insane. Uh, first of all, this is not the first time we have seen internet rights being curbed in Pakistan. We have seen Facebook banned previously following uh, the cartoon controversy and the Draw Muhammad Day campaign on Facebook. We also do know that there are petitions pending in uh, the Lahore High Court with regard to the Facebook ban. And we have also seen YouTube ban previously. Not only has this um, caused much outrage in Pakistan, but also internationally. And also at a time when the United Nations has declared disconnecting people from the Internet uh, as a human rights violation and against the law. Right. So, um, you know, don't you think that, you know, since the UN has condemned this as a human rights violation and we are pretty much known for human rights violations all over the world, we shouldn't, like, indulge in more of them? Uh, this is not only a phenomena in Pakistan. We have seen it in the region, in the subcontinent, predominantly in countries like China, Iran, and India. We do know that in Pakistan itself, ethno separatism websites pertaining to Balochistan have also been banned. In India, HRD Minister Kapil Sibyl has also asked for companies such as Google, Facebook, YouTube, and 19 other social networking websites to remove inflammatory material and pre-screen content. And as we know, China has been one of the greatest internet censoring countries. Internet censorship is at its highest in China, and as well as Iran, where it's in 2011, and uh, to 2012, we have seen 30 million users banned ahead of the upcoming elections. So clearly, not only in Pakistan, but also in the region, Internet censorship is a cause for great concern, uh, especially when in Pakistan, democracy is trying to flourish and find its feet. Fessel? So do you think that the civil rights groups and all these social activists, what they're creating a fuss about, has resonance now? You know, they should, like, get up and, you know, try to put a stop to this. Can they put a stop to this? Well... If they can or not is the, not the question. And we must voice ourselves and make ourselves heard as to what is being done to curb rights in Pakistan. This is not the first time it has happened and to remain quiet and there de will be a deadly silence and it will only create further instances when something like this can happen. Yes, sir? All right. Thank you for your uh, comments and thank you for joining us, Yusra. Thank you. Right, so now we're going to take a short break, and uh, we're going to be, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, this issue a little bit more with people on Twitter, because there's lots of people on Twitter who have been posting comments on our hashtag as pertaining to this issue, and we're going to discuss those. Hi, we're back on Out of Bounds, and uh, during the break and before that, there was lots of people on Twitter that were talking about this with us, and uh, I'm going to read out some of those tweets to you. Dr. Rashid Ali, who's a, a self-proclaimed uh, aeronauti engineer from England, ha has uh, tweeted to us, he says, this amounts to culling freedom and expression, and any progressive society must have diverse viewpoints for it to function. He further says, societies that have tried to regulate expression degenerate and is a vote of no confidence on human intellect and endeavor. Another person who was really active uh, on our Twitter feed was Susan Marie. She's a journalist and uh, a radio personality as well. Uh, she's giving us a view from abroad on this issue in Pakistan. And she says, from here it is illegal, immoral, unethical, undemocratic, and the people of Pakistan and the world need time to have a say in this. She further states, the US government tried this year with SOPA and PIPA, but we knew beforehand and fought it with petitions calling state and government to fight. Other people have also commented on this, and uh, one of them is, uh, I'm just trying to scroll through here, there's so many people commenting on this. Asan Hayat, who says, uh, now governments will try to block anti-government websites. He further states, 
it's okay if the purpose was to block positively, but up, up clearly it's not over here. So as you can see, this issue is uh, really gaining momentum in Pakistan, and it's going to even grow even further with each passing hour. Because let's just take our example. We are an internet-based TV station. And uh, for somebody to have the power to block us just because uh, they might consider some of our material objectionable is just not even fathomable for us. Because there's so much work that goes into setting up something like this, or setting up a blog, or setting up a voice on the internet. And then uh, somebody can just come and say, OK, we don't like it, so we'll block it. And you know, this is uh, really something which the government of Pakistan should not indulge in. Because uh, I mean, it's been done in the past, and it's never had a positive uh, experience or it's never been a positive uh, uh, outlook for Pakistan. So why, why would we want to do something like this? I think that if we want to um, uh, ban objectionable material like porn or if we want to ban uh, things that are against our religion and uh, whether we ban it from Pakistan or not, it's still going to be out there. So rather than ban these things, we should, I think, uh, try to control our own selves, try to control uh, kids in our own households to not view objectionable material or to have computers in a clear view of the whole household. So if they're viewing something, then everybody knows what they're checking out on the internet. That's what I do in my household. Other people could do that as well. And then there are softwares like NetNanny and other cyber uh, surveillance softwares which you can use to monitor what your kids are watching on the internet. So I don't think the issue is uh, because the kids uh, are viewing objectionable material and we need to ban all these websites. When you ban like 5 or 10 million URLs, you're basically going to wipe out internet speed in Pakistan. It's pretty slow as it is. You can't get beyond a 2 MB per second connection here, no matter what you pay as a consumer, as a private consumer. If you ban 5 million URLs on that speed, that's going to slow down to a crawl. And there's so many people in Pakistan that depend on the internet and Facebook and other social media sites who run their whole businesses, their bakeries, gyms, they're designers of clothing who are like, you know, marketing their stuff on the internet. What are we going to be saying? We're going to wipe out online business in Pakistan? Is that our goal as a, as a country, as an economy? Is that what we are progressing towards? I think this is completely out of question. And uh, the civil rights societies and uh, the activists are on the right path when they're saying that they have to talk to government and they have to basically launch an online petition or maybe you know, contact them directly face to face to try to sort this issue out. Let's hope it gets sorted out because uh, we've already gone too far back in the past with every step that we take like this and we don't want to do that any further. Thank you. This is Faisal Kabadia on Out of Bound.